Hey guys, today's video is going to be about working with the AT Mega 328P on our breadboard. Uh, please like, share, comment, and visit our website, Shadowtronics.org. Hey guys. hey guys, William here with Shadowtronics. Uh, just bringing you a quick t t t uh, sorry tutorial here. Um, what we're doing today, everybody knows the Arduino. Uh, hope you do know because it's uh, primarily what we use for microcontrollers. And do programming we are looking at breaking out into other stuff uh, a little more power well a lot more powerful is the raspberry pi we got some really cool projects coming up with it but uh today um everybody knows the arduino uno and this is a uno board this is a, an original one uno one uh you see probably made in italy um you see it does have the arduino logo so it is legit um, everybody knows there's tons and tons of different clones. Uh, I have one laying here somewhere. Oh, I did have. Oh, I'm not sure where it went. But anyway. Um, and then there's the Arduino Mega. Well, the cool, the, the thing about this that a lot of people don't realize is Arduino is not a microprocessor. It's not a, um just the software either it's a standard um the uno you can buy shields that will stack right on top of these headers uh but at the heart of the uno is this the microprocessor here um i doubt that's gonna focus no it's not anyway that's this is the eight atmel at mega 328p it's uh 32 kilobytes of ram uh with an external clock source it can run up to 20 megahertz um but and let's see uh to talk with you you use a usb to serial converter um which on the uno board it's all come it's all here it's got all the buttons and everything but let's say you're doing a small project you know, you're not going to have room to stuff this whole board in there. Or would you want to have all that in there? Uh, so what you can do, you can remove this chip and place it on a breadboard. Or in your in your case, another socket in a circuit, whatever. And um, nowadays, a lot of the sensors coming out and peripherals run at 3.3 volt instead of the old standard of 5 volt. And Uno's still run at 5 volt. Well, you know, you have to deal with log uh, level converters, stuff like that. Well, there's a, there's a solution to this. If you don't need a lot of, of the speed, is you can... The Atmega 328P has an internal clock that only runs at 8 megahertz, but runs great on 3.3 volt uh, power. And so that's what we're doing today. And the really cool part is, if you use the internal clock, there's no support components. There is nothing else needed but a chip and power. Um, and you see, I've got mine in just a standard breadboard here in the center. Um, pin 1 is always at the notch. Um, pin 1 is the reset pin. As you can see, I've got it tied to ground, which this is not plugged up anyway. Um... And you can buy these chips with the bootloader already on them, or you can buy them blank. Uh, you'll see later in the video, you know, if you get them blank, they're pretty cheap. Um, if you get a blank one, you'll need a way to upload either the bootloader or your code directly to the chip. And you do that with an ISP programmer, in-system programmer. Um, they have dedicated boards. I have one I'll show you in just a second. Or, if you have another Uno or a Mega, you can upload some software to it that will turn it into a programmer. Uh, it works great, you know, if you've got more than one Uno laying around. Um, if not, if you for a little, to be a little quicker, you can get one of these ISP programmers. They're cheap. They're like a dollar or something on eBay. Um, the one I have here is blue. Get that up in the light there. Um. Works great. It has a six-pin header, uh, which is standard. Uh, there is a standard for the ICSP uh, header connector, so it's easy to hook up. Um, 
and there are um, in Windows 10 you do have to have a driver which um, Adafruit has packaged into a nice little program uh, bu uh, package bundle you just click it install it it does everything for you um, the link to that will be in the description below so will be the links for everything I'm using today um, I'm also using a FTDI uh, US USB to serial converter that's the FTDI 232 um, you can use those there's the CH 1001 or whatever it's called uh, you can use those um, I prefer the FTDI because the DTR pin is out where you can get it you can use it and what that does is it allows you to do auto reset for upload um, I do not have it wired up here but I'm gonna try it out because I've never done it um, hang on just a second folks sorry about that uh, we're back now um, yeah the auto, if you don't use the auto reset all you have to do is take a wire from pin one and tap it to ground when it go when you go to upload your code um, the ISP programmer has a reset line also that you just hook on to pin one and it'll reset the chip also um, that's it for the uh, the wire up I do have a small uh, 10 UF cap on the power rails just to help clean up uh, the power because uh, USB power can, can sometimes be a little noisy so I just took a little cap on there to just help with the spikes and stuff but all in all that's it okay I'm gonna pause the video here and switch over to the screen capture so we can look at the software and upload a bootloader hey guys this is William with Shuttertronics uh, we're back again finishing up our uh, tutorial on programming the Atmega 328P to run uh, at 8 megahertz on the internal uh, the internal crystal um, to program it with the Arduino software um, yes you can go out and buy I think it's called the Arduino Pro Mini that already runs at 3.3 volt but the flexibility of doing it this way is there's no external components and you can put it into your project into your circuit board it's custom um, one reason I like it is uh, pin D13 uh, which is digital 13 um, has on the Arduino boards as everyone knows on the Uno boards uh, has an LED attached well that can cause some issues um, if you're doing something that has a resistive load has a resistor in it because that's what an LED is basically it's a diode and a resistance um, so um, the other pros is that you don't have to have a USB to serial chip and all the supporting hardware um, like I said you can run it at 3.3 volt which is the goal for my current project a weather station is all the sensors are run at 3.3 volt and if I can have the microcontroller running at the same voltage you know that's that's less power components uh, less noise in the with uh, using two different power regulators um, I have successfully tested this with three um, in a loop um, nickel metal hydride batteries uh, it gives me about uh, 3.8 to 4.14 when they're fully charged uh, I've successfully run all this uh, three cents uh, sorry two sensors and a temperature and humidity sensor a LDR uh, light dependent resistor and a NRF24 NRF24 radio all on uh, just three rechargeable batteries uh, works great uh, low power especially if you uh, in my case I only send the weather the weather information every minute so you know it only takes not even 50 I think it was 50 nano uh, 50 microseconds for it to send the data across the radio and it goes back to sleep so for 59 minutes a, an hour it's asleep um, pulls very very little current when it's asleep so um, any kind of battery powered project this is great because again you don't have the overhead of a 
uh, voltage regulator, uh, filter caps, you know, uh, the USB to serial, stuff like that. So, um, if you've watched the f previous videos, well, if you've watched it up to this point, um, you've seen how we've hooked everything up. I am using a micro USB ISP programmer. Uh, it's a dedicated standalone little programmer works great um, I've used it for two days now um, works really good but if you don't have one of these um, you can make an uno or a mega I'm assuming um, into a programmer in the IDE there is a in the examples folder let's see I'll bring it up here in the examples folder you get into Arduino ISP and you load that onto your Uno. You take, you hook the Uno to the breadboard uh, chip, and it'll program it. It'll, it'll burn a bootloader. Then you can use a um, USB to serial converter, um, like the FT uh, FTDI 232 or the CH. Oh God, I forget what the name of the, the number was on that one. And talk to it over serial, or you can leave the programmer connected. And just program it using the the ISP, which works just as well um, that I found out. But um, somewhere here in a second, there'll be a picture pop up to show you my connections and my breadboard, and we'll get to programming this thing. Um, I've already done this a few times today, just getting things, getting bugs worked out. Um, one caveat of this is. If you have the FTDI USB to serial programmer, uh, serial adapter, is it has the DTR pin broke out, so you can hook it up, and you can get the same auto reset function like you do if you're using an Arduino Uno board. Um, the one I have, the CH, I can't even think what the name of it is now. Um, it does not have the DTR pin broke out, so you have to bump the reset. Uh, Currently, it's just on a wire, and you just touch it to ground. Right when the uh, IDE says, uh, now uploading, uh, you just bump that reset real quick, and it'll upload. But we'll go through and uh, set up um, doing the bootloader first. Um, another note here is, if you, don't, if you have one of these programmers, or turn an Uno into an ISP, programmer you don't have to use a bootloader um you know i'm not sure how big the bootloader is i think it's um you know i really don't know we'll look when we upload it here um i'll look in this folder real quick of course that's a non-compiled file so it may not be the same here uh, the same size nope no, this is a bootloader. Um, this showing six kilobytes, so uh, you've got 32k in the 18 mega 328. Um, you know, uh, say you needed five more k or three more k, you could you could just uh, use the programmer, push your code up, and load not load a bootloader, and you'd have you'd have that extra six k available um like i said that size may not be right uh we'll find out here in a second when i upload it but you know that's just another that's another avenue you can go that you don't have to use the bootloader the bootloader is just a convenience to make it easier for uh new people and well i guess experienced people you can upload through the serial um or usb to serial i should say if you go that way, if you had a serial cable. But, um, anyway, we'll get to loading the bootloader on this thing. Um, the files will be linked down below. Uh, you do have to install a boards file for the internal clock, uh, the Atmega 328 with the 8, 8 megahertz internal clock. It's real simple to do. It's just drag and drop a folder, and then you select it here in the IDE. So, I'm going to go and click this so you what you do is you get a tools you set your board after you install it 
It'll show up here, ET Mega 320 on a breadboard, 8 megahertz internal clock. All right. Then you go down and you, you choose which programmer you're going to use. If you're using an Uno to program it, you would choose Arduino ISP. Um, since I'm using the little uh, micro ISP, this is the one I selected. It's USB tiny ISP. Um, these do need a, this does need a driver in Windows 10. Um, thankfully, uh, the great people over at Adafruit have it. I'll, you know, I'll make sure I put the link in the description below. And so, once you've selected your programmer, click that, then you click, uh, make sure you get everything hooked up correctly. I've got to move one wire here for the reset pin. Okay. And then you click burn bootloader. This usually takes just a second or two, and uh, you should get a done, you know, a finished or done, you know, hopefully no errors. So, okay, see, I've already got an error here. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Trap for young players. Make sure you plug it in first. Sorry about the phone ringing in the background. Give me just one second, folks. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. Uh, yeah, I got the program plugged up now. You know, that was <laughs> my fault there. So we'll hit burn bootloader. And as you can see, it's writing. It says 100%. I said it just takes a, about a second or two for this to, to work. Uh, it says it may take up to a minute. Um, I've not found it to take that long. And if you see, it looks like it finished. And let's see. Yep. It wrote it. It writes the file. Uh, actually, it does a. It actually erases the flash memory, and then it um, writes the file. Then it reads back. Um, okay, it says thirty-two six fifty-two flash was written. I think that's actually no. That's it. Yep. And then you see that it checks the lock. And it does the verification, and it's done. All right. Um, I'm not sure if this one does. I know if you do it for the Uno, it automatically uploads the blink sketch. So if you put a LED on pin 13, you would see it blinking. Uh, now, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the um, the FTDI uh, 232 serial converter and upload this program like you would with a regular Arduino board. Uh, like I said, the only difference is um, I will manually bump the reset to bring up the bootloader. Alright, so I've got everything set up here. Uh, actually, I do not. I'm telling Fib here. My trusty cable's here. Alright. And if you can hear, that's the, that's the USB to serial device being recognized. Um, so what we'll do, we'll go in here and make sure our board is still set. And make sure we have the right COM port, which I know is COM18, I believe, for me. And all we're going to do is we'll upload a little sketch. It just starts the serial and prints out Hello World um, to the serial. And we'll be able to see if it's working. So we're going to hit OK here. And you'll see the reset I'm talking about here. Um, what I do is I go ahead and... Uh, to reset the chip, you take the reset pin, which is pin one. You put it, you put it to ground, and you'll see right here when it says uploading. You put, you take that pin off, and it flashes. All right, now we'll open our serial prompt, our serial console, and we have hello world. So it's as simple as that. Um, takes a few minutes to remember the. To learn the, the pin locations and how the ISP programming works, it's really neat. I can show you that. Um, I can do the exact same thing uh, with that programmer. I don't have to use the uh, USB to, to serial, but it just makes it a little bit easier. And like I said, if you do it this way, you actually save a little bit of flash uh, memory because you don't need a bootloader. Um, it'll load it'll load your program directly into the chip. And when you start it, you know, um, people say I'm, I have no personal experience, 
but people say that it's actually faster if you have a bigger program is not to have the bootloader because it instantly starts your program with the bootloader it has to load the bootloader it waits a few se I think it's a second or two to see if uh, you're trying to upload something to it if not it'll close and then open your program so that's just another uh, tricking uh, tricking your hat for that um, but what I'll do now is I'm gonna hook back to the ISP programmer I'm losing cables over here I hope you guys are liking these videos um, you know I know I'm not in the videos a lot uh, I do a lot of this voiceover stuff and I hope it comes out clear for you guys uh, it's all unscripted I try to just you know like I like we've said in other videos uh, Shadowtronics uh, what we're about is just bringing electronics and technical stuff to everyday to the to the everyday person um, the climate in our culture is everything is technological so you're uh, you know kids going to college today uh, kids coming up gonna be be going to college they're gonna have to have these these skill sets because I mean face it we live in a computer driven world everything from banks to your food uh, to money everything is computer controlled anymore I mean uh, biggest retail in the world Walmart are now going to replace stalkers with robots in store and they've already they're going to do it in like 50 stores to test this thing just goes around looking at the shelves if it sees something out it tells somebody to bring to bring the stuff out of the back um, so you know eventually it's going to be like the Jetsons you wake up you step on a treadmill and you go through and it does everything you come out dressed on the other end um, so enough of that let's do some uh, ISP programming um, what you do instead of just clicking the normal upload button you can yeah it's shift and then you can click on it as you see there it says upload but if I hold the shift key it says upload using programmer or there's an option here in the sketch menu it says um, upload using programmer so basically the same thing you just click that and it should build and use the programmer to upload yep there it is it's writing to flash now it'll write it verify it and say done and we can verify it's done by unplugging from the programmer plug in the uh, USB to serial and there we are hello world so I hope you guys like this um, like I said I'll put the still images in and I'll put a link to our blog our website that I have a written guide also uh, here in the next day or so um, if you guys enjoy these want to see more tutorials on just the basics um, I plan on doing one on soldering um, etc I mean I know there's tons and tons of videos but like I said I want to put my unique spin on it of making it to where any person young old crazy senile can build a basic electronics kit um, check out all of our other projects our home automation stuff our uh, greenhouse stuff will be up there soon um, the home automation stuff will be there in the next day or two um, the, you know we are the home of the first Wi-Fi dishwasher uh, so look for that check that check that out uh, subscribe uh, below give us a thumbs up thumbs down if you like it you hate it let us know so that we can make better videos and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below or visit us on the website um, I guess that's it for today